back. My next guest this morning, Tasha and fiance Chris, have faced every parent's worst nightmare. You see, Tasha lost her baby at 18 weeks pregnant, and since then, grief has torn this couple apart. And even though Tasha is now pregnant again, they just can't seem to move forward with their lives. Very brave to be here. Tasha's on the show, guys. You've had the worst time, I know that, and you came here for a reason. Why? In February, I lost my little girl. Will, can we, uh, some tissues, please? Yeah. <laughs> it's been so hard on me and Chris because we used to be, thank you, such a strong couple. We've been through loads of stuff together. You've got a child already? Yeah, I've got a 15-month-old son who I idolise. Um, but when we lost our little girl, our, just, our relationship just broke apart. Um, it's just been, so, I don't know, it's just been so hard because... Because you don't talk about it, right? Yeah, basically. We, I mean, when, when we lost her, we did tried to communicate and um, we tried talking about it um, but it just seemed like not we weren't getting anywhere we weren't communicating. How far gone were you when you miscarried? 18 weeks and three days. Um, I didn't class it as um, a stillborn because obviously I wasn't over 24 weeks but. Is that the rule? Yeah okay. but as far as I'm concerned it was a baby I held her it was, she was fully formed. You had to give birth to her. <laughs> Six and a half hours. <laughs> when I started losing the blood, basically, I didn't think at first that it, it was anything wrong. I just thought maybe, because the first time I went into hospital, they said it could have been my placenta, which, I thought it, it would have healed itself, basically. But then when I went, when I actually lost loads, loads, it... The reality hit. Yeah. Can I ask you, it's not that I want to steer it away from the medical side, but that's not a, an area that I'm an expert on. In fact, I'm probably not an expert on any side, but since the miscarriage, you, you, losing your daughter, um, the relationship has suffered through lack of communication. You, your um, partner, interestingly, um, he used to drink a lot. Yeah, he did. Um, and he stopped? Yeah, he did. He got help because, obviously, we've got a son and because I was pregnant again, our relationship was getting better because he'd stopped drinking, he was going to counselling. And ever since we lost Shamika, which is my daughter, um, Things just got worse. He started it, drinking again. Yeah, yeah, because I think it was his way in, in dealing with things. I mean, my my way to deal with it was two weeks after I lost her, I went back to work. You know. Neither way is right, I suspect. No. But everybody thinks they have an answer. Um. Again, to add to this as well, you're pregnant again. Yeah. Now, some would say that that's the absolute ultimate way of sorting this out. Others would say that if there is so much going on and you're so affected naturally by it, then it isn't the right thing to do. Um, the relationship at the moment, I suspect, is two people treading on eggshells, right? Yeah. He drinks to blot out the pain. You get frustrated that he's drunk and not talking to you. You worry about this next child. Mm -hmm. That's a terribly traumatic experience yeah. anyway. And then you've got this young kid. Do you fight? We have done, yeah. But I'm not going to blame everything on Chris. It's me as well. I mean... Yeah, his drink has a lot to do with it, but... What do you need from him today, darling? I just want him to open up to me and talk to me. Don't block me up, because it's not just him going through this pain, it's me as well. Today is about you two, as, as you quite rightly say, opening up. Should get him out. Okay. Brave guy. Chris is on the show, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>
Chris, welcome to the show. Um, would it be fair, what Tash has said, that you guys don't talk? Yes. The child that you tragically lost can't come back, but the importance of the fact is, is that you have a 15-month-old child who, whether you like this or not, will pick up and be aware of what's going on. You have another child on the way, and you have a lady next to you who is terrified. I am not for one moment ever going to stand here in front of stories like this and say that the woman has suffered more physically, of course, but psychologically it's horrible for both of you, but you both need to talk. You don't need to look at me, get Graham out in a tick. You need to talk to each other, candidly, honestly, about how you feel. Yeah. I know... I know we've been through a lot for the last couple of months and everything, especially the loss of our daughter. And I know it's hard. You know I always try to be there for you. You know I love you. I love my kids. You know I have a problem. What problem do you have? I have an alcohol problem. I'm not proud of it, Jeremy. Uh, I can drink. I can drink about probably sometimes three, four litres of, whether it's vodka. Three or four litres of vodka? Le uh, well, whiskey, vodka, or brandy. I'm not, if it was like cancer, it would have been. Obviously, to block out the pain. I try to. It's not gone in the morning, though, is it? It's, not it's got a headache. The pain's still there. You've got to deal with it. You've got to unblock it and deal with it. Both of you. Yeah? yeah. Good team. Just want me to open up to me more. No, I love you, and you know I do, and I'd do anything for you and our kids, but I just can't carry on the way we're, we're going. I know, sweetheart. I know. And I want to do this, not just for, for me and you and the kids, I want to do this for myself also. And I'm trying, you know I'm trying my best. I know you are. But I... you're not trying hard enough. I know. It's hard to, you know, Tasha, I know it's hard. I know how hard it is when, you know. I just need more help. No. And I want to do this so we can get ourselves back, you know, our relationship back on track and everything. And I really mean that from the bottom of my heart. I really want, to want, want this to work. So we have a lovely, beautiful son. And, you know, he's the only thing that has keep us going at the moment right now. And especially this baby now that's coming on the way. I just keep my fingers crossed and then hope and say this one will be full of fun and love and everything, which we'll be, both parents will be there to give it as much love. I think the, uh, the sentiment of wanting to talk, communicate, open up is fine, but sometimes, it, actually, when I started doing this show, I thought that counselling was a dirty word. I thought they wheeled out a man or a woman in a white coat <coughs> and made you feel, you know, about that tall. Uh, but actually, everybody at some point in their life has a moment where... We're blocked. We don't, we're, we're a bit of a cul-de-sac, right? And you don't know which way to turn. Should we get him out? It's a genius, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. I, 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 no, true. Is, is that not true? People get to a point in their lives, they reach uh, the cul-de-sac, they don't know which way to turn. Yeah, and I think the relationship has been struggling for some time. And um, <clears throat> prior to coming to the show, you both did go to relationship counselling, but then ended up arguing in that session. Yeah. And Did never you? went back again. Yeah. I felt so embarrassed. I didn't want to go back. <laughs> because you were arguing so yeah. much. You argued in the counselling <laughs> yeah. session. We See, I think that's funny. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, I think you should laugh about that. But listen to him. Um, I think the one rule in relationship counselling is that you shouldn't argue because when one's talking, the other one really should be listening. There is an underlying problem, and it's your alcohol problem. I know. That. And it's one that we can't ignore. And... You have been to alcohol counselling and you did stop drinking for a while. And then with the loss of this child, you started to drink again because that's how you cope with certain situations in life. And what you find there is that <coughs> you drink in order to cope with your loss. But she's alone and she's not coping. And you have a one-year-old child. She's 24 weeks pregnant and she's not coping with the loss of her child. You need to stop drinking again, don't you? Yeah. Because let's be really, really honest here. This relationship could work mm -hmm. if we removed alcohol from the equation. You have to take responsibility for that. Yes, I know. I have to. And you do have to stop drinking. 
you, you talk very eloquently, but you need to act on that sentiment, I think. I think, I think that's what we're saying, isn't it? <coughs> yes. I do have faith in him, because I know that he can do it. He's given up alcohol before, and there's no reason why he can't do it again. But isn't, that, just... isn't that the thing about addictions, though? You turn to that crutch, if you like, when things, when things are hard, and, and that's yeah. the thing you lean on. The thing is that you've got a great coping system here, you know, because when you were talking together there, you were supporting each other. You really were. And you were discussing how much you wanted to be with each other. And that this relationship, you both wanted to work. And you talk really well together. Mm. But alcohol doesn't give you a rational mind, and does it? If you it? don't have a rational no. mind, you can't have rational conversation. If you can't have rational conversation and honesty, then you stay in your own little world. Um, we want to work with both of you. I think there's love here, and I think it's, a, it's, it's so, something that you can do positive work with. Absolutely. First stage, let's deal with the alcohol problem. Let's go back into relationship counselling, deal with the loss of your child together, and then build this relationship, because you have another child on the way. And I bet you bottom dollar, he won't let you argue during relationship counselling. I won't. Counseling. Are you I all right? <laughs> yeah. Tash, Chris and Graham, give them a round of applause. Good luck, my friend. Nice to see you.